in the church, uh, but he does care if you get down on your knees and pray, amen. He does care if you have fellowship with God, amen. Let me just go ahead and say you can come to church and not have fellowship with God, uh, but if you get down on your knees and pray and ask for God's uh, presence in your life, then God will have fellowship with you, amen. And the devil's main desire is to try to keep you from having fellowship with God, amen. Think about that hedge that was made, that hedge that was prayed, amen. In order to make a hedge, you're going to have to pray a hedge, amen. I certainly believe that today. You're going to have to pray uh, the walls of prayer around your home. You're going to have to pray uh, that, that God would touch your home, amen. I, I, I remember growing up so many times, I'd, I'd hear my daddy off praying. I'd hear my mom off praying, amen. And, and I, th I thank God for that today uh, that I had some praying mamas and daddies, amen. I thank God that there's some here today that's some praying uh, mamas and daddies and that you had some praying mamas and daddies in your, uh, in your life. And I praise the Lord for that. That, uh, but we're living, we're seeing in this day a generation that does not know a mama that prays, amen. Uh, there, there's kids that will go home today and they have never heard their mama pray. Uh, they've never heard their mama stand up and shout or testify, amen. Uh, they've never seen their daddy get down on their knees and pray, amen. Uh, but wouldn't to God that we'd get back in the altar, amen. And we'd say, I want to have fellowship with God and I want a wall of prayer around my home, amen. I want a wall of prayer around my family uh, where that nobody could get in, nobody could get out and that, that, that my children would be safe in the Lord today. Amen. It's my desire for my kids that, 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 that God would, would put a wall around our home where that my kids would not be exposed. Amen. To the things of this world. And I, I understand a lot of people they think well if you shelter your child too much they'll, they'll, they'll go crazy when they get 18 years old. I understand what you say by that because if you don't expose them to some, but let me tell you, you ought, you ought to try to keep exposing them from anything, amen? And, and they ought not to watch television in your home and, and hear cuss words all the time, amen? And, and if, if they see you watching that junk all the time, uh, then they're going to think that's all right, amen? If they if they see you listening to ungodly music all the time, then they're going to think that's all right in their life, amen? If they see you dressing any old way, uh, they're going to think that's all right, but God, he's got a way that we ought to live, amen? And I certainly believe that we need to have some conviction and we need to have some standards in our life and we don't need to compromise uh, to the ways of this world. I believe that Job had a hedge about him uh, because he was a praying man, amen. Uh, he didn't bend, he didn't bow uh, to the, the, the things of this world, uh, but certainly he did bend and bow to the Lord, amen. And he certainly uh, desired to serve the Lord and to fear God and he was a man that eschewed evil is what the scripture says. And praise God for that, amen. I thank God that Job would not bend to the ways of this world. I wonder today... If not only there's a hedge around you, but around your house. Amen. I wonder if you've got God's protecting hand on your house this morning. I wonder if your kids are safe in the arms of God, if you've prayed a hedge about them. The devil would love to get them out in this world and, and, and lead them the other way, a way towards hell, a way that is broad, a way that is wide. Amen. The devil wants your child to not come to church at all. The, the, the devil wants you to talk bad about the preacher, amen, bad about the evangelist, amen, bad about the church members. That, that's what the devil wants you to do at the dinner table, amen. He wants to get you to the dinner table and start bringing up some things in your mind about why somebody acts this way or so why somebody acts that way or why he preached what he did or, or anything like that. The devil's main desire is to distract you uh, from serving God today. And if, and if he can run anybody down in your presence, then he's doing his job and, and, and he's teaching you uh, that it doesn't really matter to come to the house of God. It, it, it really it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about how often you come to church, amen. But the Bible says that we ought not to, we ought not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, amen. I appreciate the house of God. I appreciate people that come to the house of God, amen. Uh, you strengthen me and you encourage me. Uh, when, when, when you walk in the house, of the house of the Lord, I'm encouraged to see your face, amen. I'm glad that there's other people that go through the same things I'm going through in life, and I'm not only by myself, amen. And, and don't get me wrong when I say that. I don't wish any harm or destruction upon you, but I'm glad that we're all the same, amen, and I've not went through anything that you've not went through, and you've not went through anything that I've not went through, but we're all faced by the same temptation of the devil that, uh, throughout the week, amen, we all face the same things, amen, we all face the same temptations, I think about a hedge that needs to be around our house, we need to bind uh, together, we need to come together, and the Bible says to bear you one another's burdens, amen, uh, we need to take each other's burdens to the Lord in prayer, and if somebody's got a need in their life, praise God, we need to get that need, and we need to meet God on their behalf, amen, we need to meet God on, on, on the, the behalf of others uh, that God would help us all make it through this life and be faithful to him. God is looking for us to be faithful today. Uh, he's not looking for us to be unfaithful. Uh, he's not looking for us to be unholy, amen. Uh, but God, he wants us to be faithful. He wants us to be committed today and we ought to be willing to be committed for his cause, amen. For the cause of Christ is why I serve him because of what Christ has done for me. I think about a hedge around Job that was made. It was a hedge that was prayed, amen. The Lord says here in Nahum chapter 1, verse 7, 
It says, The Lord is good, a man of stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. I want to focus just for a minute on that phrase, The Lord is good. Amen. Ain't, ain't the Lord good? I, I believe that we can all say amen right there. Uh, the Lord is certainly good, and in the goodness of God, uh, it, it's what leads man to repentance. Amen. It, had it not been for the goodness of God, uh, we wouldn't have a chance at heaven one day after a while. Uh, we wouldn't have a chance to believe on the name of the Son of God. Amen. Uh, we'd never had a chance to hear gospel preaching. Amen. Uh, we'd never had a chance to go to church. Uh, but the Lord is certainly good today. Amen. I believe we can all wake up and say, Thank you, God, for letting me wake up uh, to see another day you put breath in my lungs. Amen. Uh, you've allowed me to walk once again. Amen. You've allowed me to go uh, to, the, the, to the dinner table, the breakfast table, whatever. And you've allowed me to sit down and have a meal with my family. The Lord is certainly good. Amen. You can walk to the closet this morning. You can find a clothes to put on. No matter what time of year it is, you can find some clothes uh, that will fit you, that, that will, uh, that will uh, be, be good for you. Amen. I appreciate uh, the fact that God, he's never let us go hungry. Amen. Uh, the Lord is good. Every time we go to the cabinets or the refrigerator, uh, we open it up and there's groceries inside. Amen. They don't just magically get there, but God, uh, he makes a way. Amen. He gives us a job uh, that we might make a little income that we might can provide uh, for our family. And certainly I can say to you today that the Lord is good. Amen. I believe if the Lord took all that away from me today, uh, that I'd still be able to say the Lord has saved me. Amen. And the Lord is good to me, and he's good to all of us today. And we ought, we ought to just understand and appreciate God's goodness for just a moment. The Lord is good. Amen. I'm, thank, I'm thankful so, so much for the goodness of God that leads man to repentance. But it says on uh, in the verse number 7 here, it says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. Amen. And, and, and you don't need a stronghold uh, when, when things are going good in your life. Amen. But you do. You do need a stronghold for in case danger comes your way. Amen. If a country's doing good and they've got a border around themselves and, and there's no wars going on, no, no fights going on outside the boundaries, amen, then they don't really have anything to worry about. They don't, they don't worry and they don't fret when things are going good. But if something were to happen out in the world and they've got a boundary about themselves, then they, feel, they still feel pretty safe. Amen. I trust our military today to keep us safe. All the, the men and women that fight for our country, I praise God for all the veterans, all, all, all the people that have fought for this country. Amen. Memorial Day is coming up, and we'll, we'll remember uh, the, the, the veterans that have passed away uh, fighting for our country. I thank God for that. The Bible says if, you know, that there, there is no greater love uh, than, than somebody that would lay down his life for a friend. Amen. I do believe in that, and I'm thankful for the ones that have fought for our country and for our nation, and I, and I feel very confident today if other countries were to declare war on us uh, that we would have enough a backbone in this country to fight for our freedom. Amen. I praise God for our freedom. I believe that we live in the best country on earth. I know we've got our faults and we've got our failures today, uh, but let me tell you God, at one time he had his hand on this nation. Amen. Uh, the, the founding fathers of this nation. Amen. Uh, they lived for God and they had some, uh, some backbone and some convic convictions about themselves and they stuck to the word of God. Amen. And, and I know that we're in a point in time in this life uh, where the people's trying to take the Bible out of everything. Uh, they're trying to take it out of the school they already have. Uh, they're trying to take it out of the courthouses that they already have, amen. I think about the, 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 the government that we have. Uh, they don't want nothing to do with the Word of God. And they say, well, if you want to abide by the Ten Commandments, that's all right. Uh, but it's really not necessary, amen. Uh, let me tell you, you ought to strive every single day uh, to abide by the Ten Commandments. I'm not saying you'll, uh, you, you'll be able to overcome that, amen. Uh, but it will be a good way to live. And I know uh, that it would, it would provide some good morals for you and for your family, amen. Uh, but I think about how our country today, it was founded upon... Uh, the, the, the Christian doctrines of this book. I mean, I thank God for that. I, I'm glad that we have the privilege today uh, to go to the house of God because we live in the nation that we do. Oh, the, the freedom of religion is a special thing. Amen. Uh, you can worship whatever you'd like. I'm glad to say today that I worship the high and living God. Amen. I don't, I'm like Daniel. At one time he said, uh, well, Daniel, or, uh, the, the king told, Nebuchadnezzar told him, uh, Daniel, all your gods that you have. Uh, but, but in the end, Nebuchadnezzar said, you know, you serve the most high God. Amen. And, and that's the God that I serve today, the Most High God, and, and the Lord is good today. Uh, he is a stronghold in the day of trouble, amen. When trouble is to come our way, uh, the Lord, He is a stronghold in that day, amen. I praise the Lord for that. I'm, I'm wondering today, uh, have you prayed a hedge of protection around your home for when the devil tries to creep in, amen? I think about how a house, you know, you can build a house and you can seal it as tight as you want to, and praise God, there's insects and mice that will get in, Amen. That's what the devil tries to do, by the way. He's trying to find a way to get in anywhere that he can, and he wants to be a pest, amen. He, he, wants, to, he wants to cause 
terror is what he wants to cause. That's what a mouse does, praise God. If there's a mouse in my bedroom, I ain't going to sleep a wink, amen. And, and we've been spending out with my parents for the past week because we're waiting to move into our house. Uh, but the other night I was laying there and I heard something up in the attic. I thought, uh, I thought God help us, that's a coon up there or something. It sounded so loud. I didn't know what it was. But praise God, uh, you know, that, that's how the devil is. He tries to sneak in your home any way that he can. And he tries to get up uh, in your home and, and he wants to cause terror. He wants you to be terrified. He wants you to worry about everything, amen. And the devil, he does a good job at getting in the homes of Americans, amen. I, I do believe there's a lot of families, they just swing open the door and they say, devil, come on in, amen. Let me just tell you, we ought to push the devil out at church, amen. We ought to push the devil out at home, but especially when, when we get to church, we ought to keep the devil out, amen. But it seems like the devil, he tries to creep in any way that he can, and he'll get in the middle of a church service any way that he knows how, amen. I mean, if he comes through, your, if he gets into your mind and gets you thinking about things that you'll do after church or things that you'll accomplish this week, then he's done his job, amen. But you, and, and we was talking to Brother Toby the other day uh, on Thursday, I believe it was. He said Wednesday night, I guess we might have had 100 or so people here. He said out of 100 and something people here, he said only about 10 of them was really paying attention to the service, amen. And I wonder, was you one of those that was paying attention in the service or was the devil in your mind and was you thinking about other things? Was you not excited about worship, amen? And, and how many times? Do we come to the house of God and we can't pay attention to the preaching because the devil has got in our minds. He's got in our services. Amen. He is the most faithful church member at Friendship Baptist Church. Amen. The devil will be here every single service no matter what. If it's raining outside, he'll be here. If it's 30 below zero outside, he'll still be here. Amen. I may not be here if it's 30 below zero, but he will. Amen. But the devil, he always tries to destroy our church services and he'll get in here every single time that we try to serve and worship the Lord. Amen. That, that's what the devil does. He tries to hinder us and tries to hinder our walk with God. But I'm wondering today, do you have a hedge made? Do you have a hedge prayed in your, in your life today? I, I think about a hedge that was not made in Ezekiel chapter 13 and verse number 5. He says, Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle on the day of the Lord. And then in, in chapter 22 and verse 30, the Lord says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me uh, for the land, that I should not destroy it, uh, but I found none. Amen. Let let me just tell you that sin has caused a gap in the hedge of protection today and it would be good if some men of God and some mamas and daddies would stand in that gap, amen, and saying God, and even though God, uh, he wants to judge our nation and he wants to pour out the wrath of God upon this nation, I believe that the reason uh, that he's holding back today is because there's still some faithful uh, that, are, that are coming to the house of God. There's still some men of God that's still preaching the word of God, amen, and I wonder today, are you standing in that gap that, that, that has been made in your hedge of protection? Sin has made a gap in the hedge of protection. I believe that today that we're receiving a lot of the blessings that we have because of the prayers that mom and daddy prayed. Amen. Because of the prayers that our grandparents prayed, we're receiving a lot of blessings today because of that. But I'm wondering if, it, if, if it's contingent upon that. I'm wondering uh, three or four generations from now, what will it be like? Are, are we going to pray uh, for our future children? Amen. Are we going to pray uh, for the generations after us? Are we going to weep on the altar and say, God, have mercy on our country and on our nation and, let, and, and rise up a man? Amen. And, and you say, preacher, the Lord's about to come back. I do know that. And I, I feel like he is. Uh, but nevertheless, every time there was something going on uh, with the children of Israel, every time sin was taking place, uh, God would use a man. Amen. To to, uh, to start a revival movement and I wonder today uh, would you be found faithful if you were living in the days of Noah would, would God look at you and say you found grace in my sight I'm going to use you for my service and for my glory and for my honor amen we say the Lord to come back I, personally I'm, I believe it may be in my, in my lifetime I don't know it may be a thousand years from now but if it's a thousand years from now then, then surely to goodness within the next thousand years at some point Somebody will stand up for God, amen, and God will start a great work. He'll start a great movement, and many of souls will be saved, amen. I, I look forward to that day uh, when we'd all come to the house of God, and we'd just have our mind focused on serving Him, amen, and we'd come, and He'd just break loose, and we'd have prayer meeting, we'd have testimonies, amen, and we'd have people surrendering their lives to God, uh, people giving their heart to Jesus, amen, and saying if God can do something with somebody like the Apostle Paul, uh, then surely to goodness He can do something with me, amen. I want to be found faithful in His sight. I want God to look at me and say, that boy right there, uh, he can be, be used in my service, amen? And whatever God would have me to do, uh, wherever he would have us to go, I want to be willing to do that for the Lord, amen? I wonder, are you found willing to do that for the Lord? Have you prayed a hedge of protection around your home, around your family? Do you trust that God would use your children to serve the Lord, amen? 
You say, preacher, my, my children, they don't have much chance to serve the Lord. I haven't really taught them right in days gone by. God, there, there's still a chance. Say, man, you can give your life to the Lord and you can pray for your children that God would use them in a mighty way. I know that with me having Ella and then Madeline, me and my wife, we, we may not ever have a Baptist preacher, amen? If it's a preacher, she won't be Baptist because that's not, we, we don't believe in women preachers, amen? But, but I think about how even though we have two daughters that are, that are, one's about here and one's already here, I want God to use them for his honor and for his glory, amen? If God raises up a Baptist preacher that's preaching hell, fire, and brimstone, and, and, and he won't bend and bow to the ways of this world, and, and God's got a man lined up for my daughter one day that she can marry, praise God for that, amen? But we ought to want our children to be raised up in the ways of God. We ought to want God to use our life, and not only to use our life, but use our children's life as well, that they might, uh, they might give God the glory and honor in all things, amen? And in all things that he might have the preeminence. That's what the Bible says. It says the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, amen? I'm glad that he is our stronghold in the day of trouble. And the Bible says here uh, that, that he is our stronghold. I thank God that he is our hedge of protection. But I wonder today, have you been faithful enough that God would put a hedge around your home? If you're not faithful, and as Daddy said this morning in the brotherhood, he said, a lot of people, they make 25 years of bad mistakes, and then they expect God to get them out of it in about three weeks. Amen. I mean, they, they live a life of sin and then trust that God will work all things out. And I know all things work together, together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. But there's some decisions that you can make in life that you can't get yourself out of. Amen? And just two or three bad decisions in life can ruin and wreck your entire life. Amen? That's exactly right. And um, I'll use an example just, just briefly. I mean, people don't realize, and, and I know college is expensive these days, and a lot of kids, in order for them to go to college, they... they they take out a student loan, but, it, but a lot of people, I mean, you can listen to Dave Ramsey, a lot of people are just playing crazy, amen? You have people that are going into the field of, uh, of me, me, the, into the medical field, and they'll take out $150,000, $200,000 in student loans, and buddy, they're, they're in debt right off the get-go, amen? And, and, and just one or two bad decisions, and, and student debt will stay with you for, for your entire life, and I think about that, and, and, and so I, I wonder today, uh, have you made some decisions that might haunt you the rest of your life? I hope not. But if you have, I, I do believe that you can still live for the honor and the glory of God. Amen. And, and, and although it may not be easy in the days ahead, I do believe that God can help you in the days ahead. Amen. But we're seeing a society, they're not being taught to make right decisions. Amen. And, and they're given their own choice at the age of three and four year old. Do you want to be a boy or do you want to be a girl? I mean, what, what, what in the world kind of mess are we talking about right here? Amen. The, the news that makes uh, television these days, the, the, the five o'clock news, it's almost so sick you can't even turn it on anymore. Amen. We're seeing a country that is forsaking God. And Ezekiel said, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. I wonder, would you make up the hedge? Would you pray a hedge of protection around your home? Amen. We, we, see, we see children these days in the school system. They, they don't see anything from mom and daddy at home as far as how to live, how to respond to certain situations, how to act, anything like that. And if they don't learn from you, they'll learn from somebody else. If you don't influence your children, somebody else will. Amen. Even in today's time, I'd be, I mean, you, you got to be careful these days who you let your kids go stay with, amen, or who you send them home with at night. Because ain't no telling what they might say at their friend's house. Praise God for some good godly friends that are, that are in our life. But there, there's some people out there, they don't care who they send their child home with, and, and they'll say, well, it, it's all right if their parents drink, and you see their daddy drinking Bud Light, amen, that's all right. We don't really care. We'll send you home with them anyway. We don't really care what their, their, their parents watch on TV, so we'll, we'll just send you over there anyway. Amen. And they'll, they'll send their kids to any old house where there ain't no telling in God's name what's going on. And I, I think about that. Children these days, they see so much in the school system. They don't know what's, you don't know what's on TV at their friend's house. You don't know what's in the fridge at their friend's house. Amen. And then, used to, we'd say, when they get to high school, they'll see everything and they'll hear everything. But now, that's in elementary school. Amen. That's in kindergarten. That they know every four-letter word in the book. That, that's what kind of day that we're dealing with. And it breaks my heart to know that my children have to be raised up in that society. And, and I'm not against homeschooling these days. But I, I think about how, how many things are going on in America today. And I just wonder how bad it's going to get. And how hard the fight is going to be to keep that hedge of protection prayed around our home. Amen. When kids come up to mamas and daddies and, and say, say these sentences and words. And mom and daddy's like, where would you hear that at? 
Amen. Well, my friend told it to me. Well, where'd they hear it at? Amen. Their mom and daddy must have told it to them. And, and you, 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 I think about my wife years ago when she first started teaching. Or no, it wasn't my wife. It was my mom years ago when she was teaching. She um, had a parent-teacher conference one day with a child that was misbehaving. And the child had, I think the child had pulled all their hair out pretty much. And you think something's wrong with the child. But then you get to the parent-teacher conference and it's with mom and her wife. Amen. I found problem number one right there. Amen. I found the problem. That's what's wrong is the child has to go home to that mess right there and something that's hell bound and forsaken by God. Let me tell you, kids these days are seeing everything and anything that you can imagine of. And I think about how how bad the public school system has gotten, but we need somebody. We need somebody to stand in the in the gap, in the hedge of protection. We need, to somebody, we need somebody to just stand in the gap and say, I'm not going to let sin enter into my home. Amen. We need some teachers that will stand up for the kids, amen? Teachers, that, and I, I firmly believe that, you know, they, they say you, you're called to be a preacher. I, I think some women are, are called to be teachers, amen? I mean, it just takes a special person to be a teacher. And, and I think about teachers these days, but the, t- the things that the teachers see, let me tell all the teachers here something today, uh, that you could be an influence on those kids in the classroom, amen? Uh, the things that they may not see at home, they can see it through you, amen? And I wonder, are they seeing God living in you when they go to school, Amen? A lot of kids these days, they enjoy going to summer school because they have some sort of structure, amen? They have, they have food on the table. If they go to summer school, at least the school will feed them. They go home and mom and daddy, they won't put the cell phone down long enough to feed their own kids, amen? That's what kind of day that we're dealing with today. And, and I think about that. I think about how uh, kids these days, they're be, I mean, young girls, they're being raised up to uh, be allowed to wear anything they want to, amen? And, and you can go to the beach and, and it's just an awful sight uh, that you'd see. And, and I'm going to tell you the rule uh, that I'm going to give to Ella when she grows up and gets old enough. It's raise your hand, touch your toes. If anything shows, go change your clothes, amen? And that's exactly what it all to be if any if anything is exposed or if anything's uncovered uh, you ought to be saying hey let's go get these babies some clothes at, 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 at the, the, the store at the mall amen and I don't know nobody goes to the mall these days uh, but you think about all the things that's going on in this world and the way that kids are dressing you got mamas just letting kids dress any old way and daddy's saying I don't really care what you wear out in public amen and you've got people that's, and I'm not trying to be funny today. I'm just telling you that the devil is out there and mamas and daddies have dropped their convictions about everything, amen. Instead of being their, their parents, the, the parents these days want to be their best friend. They want to say, hey, you can go uh, live a life that I never got to live. I tried to live a life uh, like this, but I never got to. So you go live that life through me if you want to and, and try to, to just have fun and live it up while you're young, Amen. And, and one day you can, you can go to church if you want to. One day you can live for God if you want to. But you, I think about how the devil, he's on every corner. He's in the form of fornication, amen. He's in the form of drugs and alcohol. Let me go back to fornication for a minute. Let me just tell you, if you're dating somebody, you ought to keep your hands off of them until you get married, amen. Uh, you ought not to touch them, amen. The Bible says it's good for a man not to touch a woman. And I think about that, how uh, fornication is so prevalent in these days and, and how so many kids are being exposed to these things because mama and daddy will not say anything about about it, amen. I want to tell you, a lot of the things the preacher has to preach on these days is because mom and daddies don't take care of things at home. And, and if you take care of things at home, then we wouldn't have to cover some of the things that we cover. But you've got drugs and you've got alcohol, you've got fentanyl in these days and times. The, the parents do not care and they've turned their eye to what really matters in life and they do not have a hedge of protection around their kids, amen. They don't have a protection around the young people. And, and, and I, want, I want all these young people that come here, I want them to see this place as a refuge, amen. I want them to see this place as a fortress for when uh, the, the, the wicked things of this world are an attack on them. I want them to come to the house of God and say, well, maybe that preacher down there at Friendship can help me. Maybe his preaching can help me and get me thinking right, amen, and get me thinking clearly. Maybe going to the altar with my ch- members will, will help me in life and help me up on this upcoming week. And, and we, we need so much help in this day and time from our church members, our fellow church members. We need so much help from the parents these days and times that we're living in. And I, I think about how, how bad it's going to get if we don't do something. Amen. I look across the crowd this morning, and I, I feel like a lot of the people here is over the halfway point in your life. If, if God gives man and woman 70 years to live, if that's a blessing, that it, it is. If you're past 70 years old, praise God for that. But I think about how many people here are under the age of 50. And what's this church going to be like 
in 20 plus years if something don't happen. Amen. If God doesn't start a revival movement in this church, if he doesn't start a work in this church, what in the world will the church be like in 20 plus years? Amen. What will the other churches across town be like in 20 plus years if God don't call up some men to preach? Amen. If somebody's not carrying the word of God years to come from now, what, what is it going to be like in Red Bay, Alabama? I mean, what's it going to be like in Russellville, Alabama? I know in Russellville, you can drive on County Road 48, and you can find about five or six churches on the same street, amen? And I wonder how, how in the world it even got to be like that. It must have been a lot of church splits. But I think about how, what is it going to be like in 20-plus years if somebody is not faithful to the house of God, and if somebody has not prayed a hedge of protection about their kids, amen? And uh, all the older men and women, they ought to be an example the younger men and women. I praise God for all of you that's been an example to me. Some of the finest people I've ever met here at Friendship. And I praise God for you. And you've been an example to me. You've been an influence on me. And I, when I first took the church, I thought, how in the world is that, that congregation going to listen to a 25-year-old preacher preach the gospel? And I'll be 27 next month. And I think about how a lot of you have just took me in, you've loved me, and you've cared for me, and you've been attentive while I've preached, amen. You've prayed for me, you've supported me, you've lifted up my hands when I've been discouraged, amen. And I praise God for each one of you. But let me tell you, somebody, uh, one day after a while, somebody's going to have to take your place, and I want to be molded, I want to be used by God, I want to be edified enough that when, that when that day comes, I'll be ready to fill your shoes, amen. I want somebody to step into your shoes one day and say, well, uh, they did all these things around the house of God for us, uh, so let's do it for them, amen. And let's do it for our future kids that will, that will come. Uh, uh, the generations down on down the road uh, I know this church was organized in 1980 but let us uh, keep on serving the Lord so that in the year of 2050 if God has not returned that we'll still be having church here on Sunday mornings Amen. if our country is still in a, in a good enough shape where we can have church openly without being shut down or being closed down amen they've already shut us down once because of COVID and I mean, so, as far as I'm concerned even if we have to move services outdoors, we'll never, have, we'll, ne we'll never stop having services again. Amen. The government, they're trying to instill fear in you today. But let me tell you, the only one you ought to fear today is God. Amen. You ought to fear the Lord himself, and you ought to respect the Lord, and you ought to appreciate the, the fact that we have the privilege to pray. We have the privilege to go to church today. Amen. But the Bible says the Lord is good. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble. And then lastly, I, I'm, I'm about through this morning. He says, and he knoweth them that trust in him. As Brother Toby says, I'm beginning to quit. Amen. And he knoweth them that trust in him. Him. I think about how the Lord, He knows me, and ever since I trusted in Him, He's never forgot about me, amen? And, and He's got a, a firm grip on me, He's got a hold on me, that no matter what might come my way, the Lord is not letting me slip out of His hand, amen? He knoweth them that trust in Him. And in the last days, He'll say, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity, for I never knew you, but I'm glad He can't say that to me because He knows me right now, amen? He, kn he knew me 14 years ago. Uh, really, he, if you want to be honest about it, He knew about me before, he, before I was ever conceived, and God knew that I would be born and that I would need a Savior one day. And so he sent his son to die for my sins that I through him might be saved. Amen. But God, since he saved me, he's never let go of me. He's never, he's never let me slip out of his hand. And so today, I wonder, are you in the hands of God? If you're in the hands of God, uh, would you pray that hedge of protection around your home? Would you pray it around your family? Amen. If God has put that hedge of protection around you because you've lived faithfully to Him, I wonder, would you pray that your children would be faithful? Would you pray uh, that your wife would be faithful? Amen. Uh, would you pray for your pastor that he'd be faithful today? I want to pray for you that you would remain faithful. Amen. Uh, the Bible says that uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul, he said, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, and I have kept the faith. Amen. I wonder, have you kept the faith up to this? this point in your life. You say, preacher, I've failed many a times. Oh, uh, well, I, I know that you might have failed many a times, uh, but there's always tomorrow that you can do better. Amen. Or really, there's always today that you can start doing better. I praise God that he gives us a second chance, and he gives us a third chance, and he gives us a fourth chance. Amen. We serve a God of many chances. He gives us many a chances. He's long-suffering to us, and he, he cares about us. But when you get away from God, let me just say it like this. When you go outside the border, Anything can happen. Amen. I feel safe in America today, but if I were to cross that Mexican border and go down to Mexico City, amen, I wouldn't feel too safe by myself. Amen. Let's just be honest about it. When you're inside the boundaries, you feel all right. But when you get outside that border, anything can happen. Amen. It's like when, you, when you're a kid growing up, these kids will be able to relate to this. When you play hide and seek, you, you set somewhere to be base. And you say, all right, I'm going to count right here. And then when I come looking for you, if you make it back to base, then, then you're all right. You're safe. But if you're out and about and, 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 and I find you out somewhere in a field by yourself, 
then, then it's all fair game. Amen. I, I think about that. How, how as long as we're in that hedge of protection today, as long as God has got us sheltered in his arms and we're living faithfully to God, sin won't, sin won't bother you if you're being faithful to God. Amen. And I know the temptations are there every single day, but it's going to be a whole lot harder for you to fall into sin if you're so busy serving the Lord. Amen. I believe that's right. I think if you read your Bible when you get up and you pray when you get up, 